I'm Dave. Today we're going to do a bike check on my 2022 Commencal Meta SX. Now before we jump into the details, a shout out to Commencal Canada, Industry 9, Imbi Bikes, and 5Dev for helping me put together my dream build and supporting the channel this year. Let's start with the frame. 2022 Comet Style Meta SX. This is a full aluminum bike. It's a mullet, so it has a 29 inch front wheel, 27 five inch rear wheel, 160 millimeters of rear travel and designed around 170 millimeter travel fork. This bike has a flip chip. I'm gonna be running it in the slack position. Most of the riding that I do is fairly technical, fairly gnarly. So for me, the slack position just works a little bit better. Something different for this year is I've chosen to ride a size small frame. Now I'm 5'9", about 155 pounds. Normally I ride a size medium frame, but for the kind of riding that I do, I like to play around with my bike, ride a lot of technical trials kind of maneuvers. So I figured a size small frame would work best for me. One of the things that I do to balance that out a bit is I use a one-up 35 millimeter rise carbon bar and I roll my bars a little bit further forward than most people do. So that gives me a longer effective reach. That's probably why I can get away with riding a size small frame. Now holding that bar in place is an Industry 9 aluminum stem, 40 millimeters in length. I use the Anolab feature so you can choose custom anodized colors. I went with a silver body and a red faceplate. Running a set of Bergtech grips in the soft compound. These are one of the best grips I've found to use in the dry. Once they get wet, they're not the grippiest, so I'm gonna switch them out for later in the season. But for now, in the summertime, they are very comfortable. Keep your hands fresh on the long descents. Moving on to suspension. Up front, running a RockShox Lyric Ultimate Fork with 170 millimeters of travel. I run 69 PSI with two tokens, seven clicks of rebound. Don't use any low or high speed compression. Now lots of bikes these days are coming with either the RockShox Zeb or the Fox 38. For me, because I'm a little bit lighter, again, I only weigh about 155 pounds, I can get away with running the Lyric. This way I can also save about 250 or 300 grams. And really the most important reason why I run the Lyric is because it comes in red. And while we're up here, I also run a Mud Hugger Evo Fender. I use these 365 days a year. It rains often enough on the North Shore. And also when you're trying to film, you want to keep your lens clear at all costs. So I just leave this on. For the rear shock, running a Rock Shock Super Deluxe Ultimate Air. I was running coils last season but I've switched back to air just because I find them a little bit easier to adjust. Now one of the changes I made to this rear shock is I put on the Magne can. So what that does is it gives you a little bit more sensitivity off the top as well as a bit more progression overall in the shock. Now for settings I've settled on 180 psi. I've taken out all the positive tokens and I'm running three out of four of the bands that adjust the negative pressure. For tires, I made a change this season. Previously, I've been running the Maxxis Minion DHF DHR combo. Now I've switched to dual Asagai front and rear, 2.5 inch. I use XO Plus Max Grip Compound in the front and Max Terra in the rear, just for a little bit less rolling resistance. Now the reason for that change is because these tires corner so much better, and I'm not particularly good at cornering, so I will take the added rolling resistance that comes with these tires just for the confidence when you're going around those corners, and also just in the dry, dusty condition especially in the summer, having these tires on makes a big difference. Now some of the most striking parts on this bike are from a company called 5Dev out of California. Running 160 millimeter crank, what that allows you to get is a bit more clearance when you're pedaling over technical rocky sections. Running the 5Dev Enduro pedals, they have 24 pins as well as little machined grooves for extra grip in the center of the pedals. Now one of the questions I get asked quite a bit is whether I run flats or clips. Now obviously I'm running flat pedals. The only time you'll see me on clips is on my cyclocross bike. For mountain biking, I love the ability to take my feet off or angle my feet as needed, especially when I'm riding a skinny. It requires lots of body English to maneuver and stay balanced. One of the other interesting parts on my bike is this oval chain ring from 5Dev. So when we're pedaling, depending on where we are in the pedal stroke, we can generate more or less power. What an oval ring does is it has different sizes to accommodate that. So when you're able to put down more power, this 30 tooth ring is equivalent to a 32 tooth. When you're able to put less power down, it's equivalent to about a 28 tooth. So it gives you a very smooth cadence, helps you keep traction when you're doing technical climbs. Moving to the middle of the bike, running an SQ Lab 611 saddle. Two really interesting things about these saddles. One is they have what's called this ergo wave shape. Basically what it does is it allows you to put pressure onto your sit bones, your ischial tuberosities, and take pressure off of your sensitive perineal area where you have nerves and blood vessels running. Another interesting feature about this saddle is it offers some lateral tilt. 
and when you're pedaling, you get a much more natural movement pattern. It just makes it more comfortable when you're spending long hours in the saddle. Next, moving on to the dropper, running a 170 millimeter RockShox Reverb Axis Dropper. Now, this is the first time I've ever tried any wireless components on my bike. Now, in terms of performance, this is the best dropper I've ever used with light lever action, instant response, and smooth quick return, but it is also shockingly expensive. Now, the second wireless component on my bike is this SRAM GX Axis Derailleur. It shifts incredibly well, by far the most precise shifting that I've tried. Previously, I was running SRAM X01 mechanical shifting. I also have a Shimano XT drivetrain on my e-bike, and this definitely takes the cake in terms of shifting precision. One of the other nice features of this derailleur is it has what I will describe as an overload clutch. So if you have an impact on the side of the derailleur, for example, you hit a rock or you fall off a skinny, the motor will disengage, allowing the derailleur to move up and out of the way so it doesn't sustain as much damage. I'm coming off SRAM X01 shifters. I was riding them for three seasons. I love the ergonomics of that setup. Prefer it over the Shimano alternative. But coming onto this GX axis setup, it just didn't work for me. So then someone reached out on Instagram to tell me about a 3D printed option that they had created. This is done by AD Biking. It is exactly how I would expect this to shift and the best upgrade to an axis drivetrain you can make. And then rounding off the drivetrain, I have a SRAM X01 1052 cassette and a SRAM X01 chain. Running a set of Shimano XT brakes with 200 millimeter rotors front and rear. Originally I was hoping to get on a set of TRPs, but like many other things, this season they were delayed, but I am very happy with how these Shimano XT brakes perform. I was coming off code RSCs, probably been on those brakes for about two or three seasons previously. Best thing I can say about these XT brakes is they offer more power and much less hand fatigue compared to the codes, so I'll be sticking with Shimano brakes for a while. Now one of my favorite parts about this bike is the wheel set. I'm running an Industry 9 315 Enduro Carbon wheel set. Features the Hydra Hub, which has a whopping 690 engagement points. So what does 690 engagement points sound like? Well, if I start to move my cranks back, you'll hear those subtle clicks. You give the wheel a good spin. you hear the distinctive sound of the Hydra hubs. Often what I do is I take a little bit of grease and put it inside the freewheel body. That quiets this right down, so it's really easy to tune whether you want a loud hub that's easy to hear, especially if you're on a trail that has lots of hikers or other trail users, or if you want to make your bike stealth, add a tiny bit of grease in there, quiets it right down. So why does hub engagement matter on the trail? If you'd like to do technical riding like I do, which involves a lot of pedal kicking and ratcheting, very subtle movements where even a few degrees is all you're looking for to adjust your balance, you really need a hub that engages this quickly. The hubs that come on most bikes generally have about 10 degrees before they engage, and that's just not fast enough to do the kind of riding that I like to do. This wheel set features carbon rims. I've been on carbon rims for about three and a half seasons now and I don't see myself going back. I have never had a single issue with any dents, flat spots, any breakage whatsoever and I don't run any kind of rim protection or cush core anything like that. They've just worked better than aluminum rims. Now not all aluminum rims are created equal but for me if you can afford carbon wheels they are a worthwhile investment just in terms of the durability while remaining lightweight. Now you may have already picked up on the silver and red theme of my bike, that's because it was inspired by a character from the Marvel comic books named the Silver Samurai. To finish off the look, I used Industry 9's custom wheel building tool, which lets you choose from anodized colors for their Hydra hub and CNC machine spokes. I went with silver hubs laced alternating red and silver spokes to try and match the look of the Samurai's chest plate. Thanks for watching the bike check. If you guys have any questions or comments about the build, please let me know down below.